hello good afternoon everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and in today's video it's about the nairobi national museum and it's my first time to visit the place so i hope they would allow me to vlog inside the museum so that i can give you the details of what happens inside the museum because yesterday at blixen museum they didn't allow me to vlog so guys let's hope they'll allow me to vlog see you inside Okay guys, now we are at the entrance where we pay the entry fee or the entry charges. So once we're done with this guys, I hope I'll be able to give you the details, the details of what is inside the Nairobi National Museum. So guys, stay tuned and watch till the end because I know this is going to be one long video. Then we also have words that are made from animal skin for the nomadic people like the Somali, like this one here, this for the nomadic people. Mm -hmm. And then we have the words that are going upwards. Mm -hmm. So the long ones, they belong to the Maasai, the Trukama, mm -hmm. and the Somali. Mm -hmm. And we have these eight, eight pillars coming down. Now the good it's the government is trying to do to us, like giving us free education. Mm -hmm. Then we have the ones being blown out. Mm -hmm. Those are the bad it's the government is trying to fight against, like corruption, racism, mm -hmm. and tribalism. Mm -hmm. Then we have the bigger halabash, that's the government, which represents the government of Kenya. Mm -hmm. yeah. So words are used for storage. Mm -hmm. Fermentation will be, mm -hmm. and also in that one too, they can be used as a plate. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Here, mm -hmm. we have a motoni. Mm -hmm. Motoni is a headrest made by Maasai youth. Mm -hmm. So motoni was used during circumcision. Mm -hmm. The Uganda collects this colorful bird to make motoni. Mm -hmm. Some of these birds is the lilac breasted roller. This is the national bird of Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have golden oriole, buffalo river, long tail widow bird. We have quail down there. We have the guinea fall. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the birds they were going to collect to make the headrest, which was used during circumcision. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you'll feel tired of that. No, 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 it's okay. It's big. It don't worry. It's we have Abu. Mm -hmm. Abu is a musical instrument from the Luo community. Mm -hmm. So Abu. The upper part is made of antelope horn. It was blown from the upper part and it produced the sound through the hole down there. So it's just words that are fixed together with the wax from poetry. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it was when it was blown, it produced a boo sound. That's why it's called a boo. <laughs> you get that? A boo sound. <laughs> We have a map of Kenya. It has been decorated using butterflies and moth. The reason why they chose to decorate it with butterfly is because butterfly are among the most beautiful insects we have as nature in Kenya. We have over 900 species of butterfly in Kenya. So the smaller one, and they are bright in color. Those are the butterfly. The large ones are the moths. Okay. Moths are big and they are dull in color. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here we have a clock, it's called Sambut. Should I wait for you? So we have this clock here, it's called Sambut. 
Sambut is made from six monkey skin. This monkey here, it's made from six monkey skin. And the white tapat is made of Columbus monkey skin. It's used during ceremonies by the elders, the Kalenjin elders. So being that we are trying to conserve the wildlife, nowadays we don't kill the animals to make such an item, but it's inherited from one generation to another. Oh, yeah. Then here we have Siwa. So Siwa is from the Swahili community. The Arabs intermarried with the, with the Bantus to produce the Swahili people. That's why Siwa has got some Arabic writings, mm -hmm. as you can see. So we have two Siwas in Kenya. There's this one made of ivory mm -hmm. and wood, and there's also another Siwa at Lamu Museum made mm -hmm. of brass. Mm -hmm. So Siwa was carried by two people, one at the end, another one, and one person who blew it from the middle part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what is this? What is the sound of Siwa? I don't know the sound. <laughs> we have Kyondo. Mm -hmm. So Kyondo are made from sisal, sisal plants, banana fibers, and recycled polythene papers. Mm -hmm. Like this one is made from recycled polythene paper. This is from the sisal. Mm -hmm. Then we have the larger Kyondos there. Those are used for storage of grains in the house, and also unripe bananas can be stored inside there. But the small candles can be used for carrying wood. Long ago, there are communities that believed that whenever a girl was unable to make the kyondo, it was not enough to be married. You would get married if you didn't know how to make kyondo. That also is a form of identity. Whenever I go to another country carrying kyondo, they know that I'm from Kenya or I bought it from Kenya because mostly it's made in Kenya. Yeah. So this is called Great Hall of Mammals. Here we are going to see everything about mammals. Mm -hmm. The animals we have here, they are real. They have just been mummified. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so this is the centerpiece. We have some of the big five, like the elephant, the buffalo, the giraffe. So we have this skeleton. It's of a special elephant called Ahmed. Mm -hmm. Ahmed of Masabit. Mm -hmm. So the skeleton was found in, in Masabit. Mm -hmm. Ahmed was a special elephant because it was the only elephant which was given maximum protection mm -hmm. by our first president, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Ahmed died at the age of 55 years. Wow. Yeah. So you can see the task of Ahmed are long compared to the task of the modern elephant we have. Mm -hmm. Then here we have an animal called Okapi. Mm -hmm. Okapi is from Congo. Mm -hmm. Okapi and Giraffe, they, they they are not from the same family, mm -hmm. but they coexist, they coexist together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even you can see their head are kind of similar. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's it. That's why it has been placed with the giraffe. Mm -hmm. You can see this evolution and divergence evolution. So here in convergence evolution, these are animals from different ancestry or family, but they resemble, they look alike. Then these are divergence evolution are animals from the same family, but they do not resemble, but they are from the same family, but they do not look alike, even their habitats are not the same. Like we have the dugong, dugong is found inside the seas, we have the adverb, adverb big barrels under the ground, then we have the tree irax, which is found on top of the trees. What, what did you say, what is the name of this again? Tree irax. Yeah, tree irax, this is what we saw yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is what we saw yesterday. Where? Uh, at Karen Bixen. You were you at Karen Bixen yesterday? Yeah. 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 Then we have Hippo. Mm -hmm. Allow me to pose a question. Mm -hmm. Hippo, do they walk or swim? They do move they? in deep waters, but do they move by swimming or walking? I want him to answer that question. Okay. <laughs> I want him to answer that question because he's scared of hippos. Do hippos walk or swim in water? Swim? They swim. <laughs> no. They yeah. walk in water. Walk. So they, have, yeah. they walk. They have web feet that help them to walk in water. And also the big body helps them in buoyancy. Then hippos, they are semi-aquatic. They are found partly in water and partly on, on land. Yeah. Then we have dolphin there. They move by swimming. Mm -hmm. I think you've seen those animals mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. You've seen them? Yeah, the other day we were with dolphins. 
we have the the animals that move in in shallow waters and they are found in marsh, marshy areas. We have this special animal here called the marsh mongoose. Marsh mongoose is special because it has oil on its fur, so that whenever it gets outside the water, it's able to dry fast. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have Advac. Advac big barrels using the sharp claws, and also it has sticky tongue because it feeds on the termites. So the sticky tongue assists it to attract the termites. Mm -hmm. Then we have down there the naked mole rat. It's called the naked mole rat because it doesn't have any fur on its body. Yeah, it's not airy. So it also dig under the ground using the sharp incisors. The naked mole rat is born under the ground and dies under the ground. Like it spends the rest of its life underground. It doesn't come outside. And it's blind, is it? <laughs> it's not blind. Not blind. We have animals that move by running and hopping. So we have the spring hare. Spring hare is from the same family with the kangaroo, and they move by hopping. We have the kip springer. Kip springer also moves by hopping on rocky places. So it has shock absorber on the hoops to prevent it from injury. Then we have cheetah. Cheetah is the fastest animal. It moves by running. And most people always confuse cheetah with leopard, but there is a difference. Cheetah, they have uh, their bodies dotted, but the leopards have a rosette pattern. Mm -hmm. Then also cheetah, they have some tear marks on the face that helps them to reduce light. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have animals that move on top of the tree. We have the, the monkey, squirrel, and the African palm civet. They use their tail for balancing while moving from one branch to another. While the porto doesn't have tail because it uses the four limbs to move on top of the trees. We have bats here. Bats are, are the only true flying mammals. They are known to be nocturnal. Nocturnal means they mostly appear at night. It's not easy to see them during the day. And they move by fly. Then we have the flying squirrel. It moves by gliding. You see the shape of the body helps it too in the movement. Wow, yeah. it's so big. <laughs> Wow. Then here we have a mountain gorilla. So we don't have gorillas in Kenya. Gorilla, gorillas are only found in Rwanda, Uganda, and Congo. And they have strong jaws because they are nut crackers. They crack on hard nuts. So they have strong jaws to help them in cracking the nuts. So they are also herbivores. They feed on fruits and plants. Then this is a skeleton of an extinct elephant. It became extinct because it had soft teeth, so it was feeding on grass, and there was shortage of grass. It won't adapt to feeding on shrubs, so that's how it became extinct. Then this is the skull of the current elephant. We have some two background pictures there. That's the Asian elephant and African elephant. So the difference is that the Asian elephant has a slanted backbone, while African elephant has a curved backbone. And then the, Af the ears of the African elephant, it kind of resembles the map of Africa, and they are big in size also. Okay. We have these animals here. They are also herbivores. They feed on plants and they are from the same family. We have the watog. Watog is known to be the most ugliest animal and very forgetful. It forgets after every 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they are always being killed, most of them, because it's, it's chest. Then after 45 seconds, it forgets that it was being chased. It relaxes, then it's being caught. Mm -hmm. Then we have the bush pig, it has short neck, so whenever it wants to feed, it must bend in that posture for it to reach the grass. Mm -hmm. Then this is called the giant forest hog, it also feeds on the grass. Here we have omnivores. Omnivores are animals that feed on both flesh and vegetables like we human beings. So this is chimpanzee. Chimpanzee is our closest cousin. The only difference is that chimpanzee feed on raw food, but we will cook our food and feed on it while cooked. These are olive, this is olive baboon and velvet monkeys. They are also omnivores. Then we have this animal here. It's called honey badger. So honey badger, it feeds on honey. There is a certain bird called the caramine bee eater. Whenever honey badger sees the bird, it always follows the bird, the bird directs it to the beehive. And it has got a lot of fur on its body that helps it, even if it has been stung by the bee, it doesn't get deeper into the skin. Yeah. 
we have cheetah, we have hyena, spotted hyena. So hyena are known to be scavengers because they feed on leftovers. When other animals are eaten, it come and feed on the remains. Mm -hmm. We have the savol cat. Savol cat feeds on birds. That's why it has long limbs to help it to, help it to jump on the birds. Mm -hmm. We have a leopard. Leopard is known to be a loner because it spends most of the time alone. Finding it with other animals is not that easy. So you can see leopard is bigger in size compared to yeah, cheetah. cheetah. Yeah. And also, whenever they find food, they always take their food on top of the tree, like the photo there, mm -hmm. so that other animals like hyena cannot feed on their food. <laughs> Very stingy. We have lion. Do you know why you call lion the king of the jungle? Yes, do you know why we call the lion the king of the jungle? Because nobody hunts lions. <laughs> so the reason is because they roar and that raw sound they produce, there's no any other animal in the, in the jungle is able to produce that sound. Only the lion can produce that sound, that raw sound. And the darker the mane, this is called the mane, the darker the mane, the older the lion. Here we have now defense, mode of defense. We have the animals up there, they use their horns for defense. Those are so there we have the butlers, wrestlers, and stabbers. Wrestlers are the ones that interlock their horns like the gazelles, while stabbers are the ones with the sharp horns, so they stab using the sharp horns. Mm -hmm. We have this one, this is called the pangolin. Pangolin, it has sharp blades, and it always rolls like a ball whenever it wants to attack. Mm -hmm. Then we have the porcupine, it has sharp spikes, so it always spread the sharp spikes whenever it wants water. And uh, what uh, he eats? I don't know what it feeds on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, but I think... Okay, this part is just defense, the mode of defense. So feeding the... what they feed on? is not in the cage. Not in the cage. Okay, then these animals, they used chemical defense. We have the strip weasel, it farts, it produces a pungent smell. <laughs> it produces a pungent smell to scare you away. And the smell can last even for two hours, like in the photo here. <coughs> then we have the crested rat. Crested rat, it swells, it increases um, its size than the more normal size, then scares you away. I think farting is the best. You won't see about the money, the notes and the coins. So before introduction of, of currency, people used butter trade. And the, some of the goods they used in butter trade were the salt slab, the cowrie shells. And then the Arabs introduced the first currency. The first coin to be introduced was called Maria Teresa Tala. It was made of silver that had her portrait. And then we had Mombasa rupee, which, which was used along the coastal region. Then the British rupee or Indian rupee. This is the money that was used to pay the Indians who came to build the Kenya Uganda railway line. Mm -hmm. Then these are the second, the second coins to be introduced. They had holes in the middle because long ago African attires had no pockets. So the hole was used as a form of storage. They would tie a string, then hang it on their neck, like here. Yeah. So that's it. And then we have these notes. These are called the florin notes. They are the first notes to be introduced and they were only up to 10,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we have King George the Sixth. This was father to Queen Elizabeth. So these are the notes that he introduced when he was ruling, when he was the king. Then now we have Queen Elizabeth, her daughter. So Queen Elizabeth came in Kenya at Treetop Lodge in Nyeri. Then she, she received the message that her dad has, had passed. So she had to go back to her country and take over and become the queen. So she came in Kenya as a princess and left as a queen. And these are the money that she introduced, their currency, which had a portrait. After Kenya got independence, our first president, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, 
uh, introduced our currency and the first coins to be introduced were called the Uru coins. Then these were the notes. He saw that Kenya had beautiful plantation and the Lake Victoria. So he placed the plantation like Sisol plantation on the notes and the Lake Victoria. These are still the notes introduced by the first president, Mr. Jomo Kenyatta, but they now had his portrait and also they he had a commemorative coin called the Konatisa. We have these notes introduced by the second president, Daniel Toratich, and his first notes were these ones. You can see they have something on this on the neck. A snake like thing. I mean, so people said he was ruling under evil powers and he had to change the, the notes without that thing. There mm -hmm. you can see, change them. And he had a commemorative coin here called the Kona Saba. Mm -hmm. Then Mwaiki Baki, the third president. These are the, the notes he introduced. He also had a commemorative coin called the, this is the 40 shilling, the one we still use it up to date. Mm -hmm. Then these are the, the, current, the current money we are using with the animal portrait, the coins. This is 50 shilling mosaic. It was given to Central Bank of Kenya to mark the 50, to celebrate 50 years of existence. Mm. This is slave trade. It was done by a man called Tipu Tip. Tipu Tip will, capt will capture slaves and take them to Shimoni Caves waiting to be transported to Zanzibar. This is the ivory which they used in slave trade. Mm -hmm. Then butter trade. These are some of the items they used in butter trade, the goods they exchanged. Then this is cradle of humankind. So Africa is known to be cradle of humankind because most of the fossils were discovered in Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are some of the fossils which were discovered in Africa. I'll take it to the only room. You see the fossils, the ones inside there are just the same with these ones. That man, the first thought was called what? the first human. That photo over there, mm -hmm. it's called uh, Lucy. Lucy. Yeah, yeah, Lucy. It was found in Ethiopia. <laughs> it was discovered in Ethiopia. Then these are the stars you see now inside there. We have the old one tools made by the Umu Abilis. Chilean tools made by the Homo erectus. And then the early man they believed in life after death. So when a person died, they buried the person in her properties, like there. Wow. Mm -hmm. species. So I can't explain all of them. We yeah. just take some few with unique features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are hornbills. And this is ground hornbill. It lays only one egg per year. And it's called the ground hornbill because it lives on the ground. It doesn't fly. We have the doves, also known as the lambats. The smallest dove is the Namakwa dove. That's the smallest dove. We have the rollers. Here we have the lilac breasted roller, which is the national bird of Kenya. The lilac breasted roller. It's the national bird of Kenya. Then we have turacos. Turacos, the common turaco is the great blue turaco found at Kakamega Forest. Then we have owls. Owls are known to be nocturnal. They mostly appear at night. And also some communities believe that owls are bad or men. And they are able to protect their eyes up to 360 degrees. The biggest kingfisher is the giant kingfisher, and not all of the kingfishers feed on fish. We have like the python kingfisher that feeds on insects. Mm -hmm. 
They here, they have this bird here. It's called African Jacana or Jesus bird. We call it Jesus bird because it walks on top of the water lily using the feet. Water lily. Long thorns. We have the bee eaters. The common bee eater in Kenya is the caraman chested bee eater. And this is the bee eater, the bee eater that I told you that. It's always being followed by the honey badger to like direct to the bee. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have some of the national birds here. We have Kori Bastard. Wow. So Kori Bastard is the national bird of Botswana. It weighs up to 22 kgs. It's the heaviest flying bird. Then we have the national bird of Uganda, African Crown Crane. That's the national bird of Uganda. Mm -hmm. You want the secretary bird? Yeah. You'll see it. It's mm -hmm. over there. Whenever they're up on the sky, they're, they're able to see whatever is on the ground. Then we have the national bird of Malawi. It's called the African fish eagle. This is the national bird of Malawi. What about this one? This? This is also eagle. Mm -hmm. It's the national bird of... But it's Haria, Haria eagle. Oh, Haria. Yeah. Then we have Venex eagle. Verax eagle is the common eagle in Kenya. This is the common one in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have vultures here. Vultures are birds of prey and they feed on hierarchy. So this bigger one first feeding, start feeding first, followed by this, then the two, the last two feeds last. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is your... Here is the secretary bird you are asking of. Oh, so this is called the secretary bird. It's called the secretary bird because you see the feathers reach here on the neck and secretaries are known to like putting on mini skirts. And you see also the eyebrows like she's beautiful. <laughs> so that's why they call it secretary bird. And what are these two eggs doing here? That's the eggs of the secretary bird. Ooh, so it lays only two eggs? No, they only took two and placed it. Let's so many. Have you tasted? <laughs> yeah, maybe we can do an experiment. Maybe we'll go and buy and eat. Okay, ducks. Ducks are everywhere. Ducks are everywhere. We don't need that. We have the flamingos. This is lesser flamingo and this is greater flamingo. So they, they differ in color. The lesser flamingo is pinkish in color because it feeds on purely algae. Well, this one feeds on algae and other food materials. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Arabusto. Arabusto is the most ugliest bird. It's found in mostly in damp places and it feeds on bones. Mm -hmm. Bones? Yeah, bones. Who's bones? Bones, 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 bones. What is bones? Bones like bones. <laughs> What is bones? Bones is mefupa. <laughs> mefupa. Mefupa is the skeletons of your body. Here <laughs> yeah, we have the herons. So herons, you have the black heron. It has a unique feature of feeding. When there is hot sun, it goes to the lake and spread the wings to provide shade for the fishes. When the fishes come there, the, the black heron feeds on the fishes. Then we have the buff backed heron. It's parasitic. It's mostly found on the buffaloes and the cows, cattle. Then the biggest heron is the Goliath heron. This is the biggest. Here we have the pelicans. The biggest pelican is this one. The, the backed pelican. Isn't pelican the biggest flying bird, no? Yeah. 
Pardon? The biggest flying bird is not a pelican. No, it's the other. It's the cori bastard. It's the it's the heaviest flying bird. It's called the cori bastard. It's the national bird of Botswana. ऑस्ट्रिचिंग Mm-hmm. You're done? Yeah. Thank you so much. Exit. Yes, and you've been our host who? Yeah. What's your name? Wish me. You need a wish. I'm Beatrice. Oh, Beatrice. Oh, okay. Thank you.